Hello and welcome to Master Gardening. I'm your host Bud Kwok and today we're at Leon and Eileen DeBennis Gray's home which is a wildlife habitat and plants that are in full bloom are great for humans but when they start to die and go to seed they're like my mother used to say they're for the birds. Stay tuned we'll be right back. Hello, and we're here at Eileen and Leon DeBennis Gray's Wildlife Habitat. And we're, we've been here before, and you're back by popular demand, according to, to Dan. <laughs> <laughs> but today we're not going to talk about the habitat all day long. We're just going to hit on it a little bit, and we're going to talk about for the birds. birds. That, you want, well, tell us a little bit about the habitat first. Uh, what does it take, the, the basics? You've got it really easy here. You've got two big ponds. You've got the, the forest, the creek, the trees, pretty the tobacco patch. Well, oh. tobacco, no. <laughs> Although the flowers on the tobacco, maybe. Well, that's right, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, basically it, it takes what it takes for you to survive, okay? You need food and water, very basic. You Hamburgers. Need no. Some birds eat me. meat. Some birds eat meat, yes, okay. but normally not. Um, and then you need protection uh, from predators, obviously, and shelter. So you have a house, they need a place, whether it be a, a birdhouse or the trees or in the ground. A lot of times birds will also have a uh, ground nest, uh, depending on the predators that are around. So you need those four basic things, and that's what birds need. I mean, it, it's that, we're all part of the same system. That protection is where they raise their... Young. Today, you really got a good setup here. I was telling Dan how uh, you can tell this is your show with all the preparation you've done. And you want to talk about the, the food first? Yeah. That, that. I think one of the things that I, I think most viewers who are watching this obviously like birds. And, be, well, and why, why, do we, yeah. I, you know, <laughs> why do we feed the birds? This looks like a pretty expensive ordeal here. It, what's it, what's it, the deal with birds? It can be. Uh, a lot of people just like watching birds. They're one that's, of the more colorful, neat. yeah, colorful animals there are in the environment. Um, one in six Americans say they are bird watchers. And oh my gosh. they spend about $10 billion a year on food, on houses, on uh, nesting sites, um, photography, binoculars, just to watch birds. So economically, it's really good for our country and actually the world from the standpoint of taking care of a group of animals within the whole ecosystem. The more different variety of foods you have, the greater the diversity of species that you're going to get. The larger the environment that you can provide, the protected ecosystem like we have here, we have about 10 acres on this side, the more diversity you can get. Um, as I was telling you earlier, we had, have about 55 species of birds that either live here or fly through if they're migrating. Um, one of the neatest ones that I saw was the uh, immature bald eagle. One day I looked down at the pond and he was sitting there and then I saw a kingfisher. And you don't normally <laughs> see those this far from no. the, the lakes, but it was kind of cool. Okay, you want to talk about the food, maybe? Yeah, that's, that's, and you want to talk about the, uh, the, the store-bought first, yeah, maybe? Yeah, it's, it's in the wild, but just uh, in order to gather all that, it's be pretty time Yeah, consuming. most people so, aren't going to go out and have a whole bunch of sunflowers and then collect the seeds. Yeah. So we go to whatever you know, store is selling it at the time. Um, and, and one of the neat things around here is there is a, a local store in Murray that you can put in a, um, a bid or your order ahead of season and I buy Niger seed in 50 uh, <laughs> gallon bags and I buy sunflower seeds and I buy like you know four or five six that stuff's bags. That's really cheap though isn't it? No not no, at all no? but it, it takes me through the, when the prices go high because it's at a discount. Anyway you have the best um, seed if you're going to feed the majority of the birds, in other words, the majority of the birds like black oil sunflower seed Which the best. That? that would be this one right here. And these are the same seeds that you can eat. They're sunflower seed. They're a little bit smaller than the gray striped ones. If you're going to use the gray striped ones, you're going to have attracting larger beaked birds like uh -huh. blue jay. They like those. These, almost every bird can eat them. Um, the bigger birds can eat them, and then you have cardinals, tufted tip mice, uh, blue 
um, bluebirds, indigo buntings can eat that. I mean, it's just finches even. Finches, finches love it. Little bitty finches. Um, yes, and they say that finches love this Niger seed, and this really should be gold because it's very expensive. Expensive, <laughs> but the finches like that. The house finches, the gold finches, purple finches, however you want to call them, um, they like that. But they'll also eat that. This, or again. Now, before you leave it. I'm sorry. Uh, they used to call this thistle. I don't know why they it, get that mixed up with Niger. I guess it's. Yeah, thistle is, is not the name of it. Because I always thought, how did they get this out of a thistle plant? Yeah. You know, but it but it but it's not. It's, it's, it's a Niger. It's a tail of some mm -hmm. kind, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the corn is good for geese. We have a load of geese um, throughout the year, except in late July and August. They seem to go nor further north, but then they come back and overwinter with us. So I spend a lot of time feeding the geese, and, and they have their babies here too because of, of the habitat You've got the that we ponds. have. You the ponds. I get, almost have to have water source, right? To you get, do. To get you the do. ducks and the right. geese. The ducks and the geese, right. Yeah. And then the, the mealworms. Those look good. Yeah, you want some? I've seen those at the bottom of a tequila <laughs> jug, yeah. <laughs> no. not, the, not the same, not okay. the same. Anyway. I'll, I'll try one. <laughs> <laughs> it is, no. These are just dried mealworms. Yuck. and. The, <laughs> The uh, bluebirds like these, as well as the cardinals, tufted tip tuft mice, and all those. And then bread. A lot of people, I always thought that was bad for it, for birds, but it's not. If you're in the city, especially, we used to throw out old old bread. Um, these are good morning doves like it. Just make sure, and, and geese will eat it as well. Just break it up into smaller pieces. And restaurants will give that to you almost free. At the, yes. You know, at, at they cycle that off of the shelves. They and, do. A yeah. lot of the bakeries will do that. And then, of course, you can buy the suet, and this comes in different varieties. I tend to buy the the large packages. You can also buy this pre-season, too, and get it. You can it. make this, too, yeah. can't you? Have you ever you, made it before? No. No. Uh, yeah. That's just too much trouble. Sorry. <laughs> okay. But you can buy it uh, specifically for songbirds, or um, it, they put peanuts in it if, if you have a lot of woodpeckers around. Mm -hmm. um, of course, that's that. Oh, I forgot the millet. The millet, a lot of people use. It used to be the least expensive of the bird seeds. Um, it's getting up there in price as well. This I tend not to use because it's most birds don't, oh, the majority of the birds don't like all the millet in there. And it also, when it gets on the ground, it doesn't do much. Yeah, I've seen them just throw most of it on the mm -hmm. ground. Because they're going for the black oil sunflower. <laughs> so you're better off, save your money on that and buy that. Then, and I've, I've seen in when I bought this, they, they have all different kind of varieties of this now. And it's this is says wild bird, wild bird seed, mm -hmm. but they can even name it, and they they mm -hmm. have the, the different types of stuff that. I, and I guess that if they name it, it's a lot more expensive. This this, I mean, this is that like, some of it is really expensive, okay. special. I, I'm not pushing a book. I get nothing from this. But a book? There, yeah, there is a doctor, a PhD. Uh, Dr. Barnes, he's at, I think he's at UK. He, I don't know if he's still there or not, but he wrote this book. This is specifically Kentucky. It's gardening for birds. And if you're looking for specific, which is what those um, seeds are trying to get you to do, if you want a cardinal, if you want a bluebird, if you want a tufted titmouse, they're going to tell you this kind of seed. Well, he does that in this book. He also tells you um, what kind of um, at the nest, you know, what kind of house with size type of thing. So that's really a good so If you book. want to build a birdhouse or go look for one in the mm -hmm. store and say, hey, that's perfect for mm -hmm. cardinal right. or whatever, right. yeah, or bluebird. Let's okay. talk about some of the wild stuff that you might have around your yard or you might be able to garden okay. specifically for yes. birds. and that's what I do. I have, of course, blackberry, blueberry, and strawberries. I have all of those over there, and the birds... Take a look at those in a minute. Yes, the birds will eat those. Now, you have to share. So if you want all your strawberries, you may have to put a cover over it if you want to keep it from the birds. Netting. Yes, netting. But um, I plant enough and if, uh, that the birds can share and with me. I have no problem with that. This is a native. It's a uh, choke berry. Um, some people call them choke cherries as well. But these are great because they're just coming into season right now, going into the fall. And a lot of your uh, crab apples, these are just coming in. These will get to the point in the uh, winter time where they will be ripe for the birds. So that's great. And They'll get I, about three or four times that size. Usually. Yes, they, they will. I, did, I picked them just to have a reminder to talk about them. I forget things all the time. <laughs> of course, we have the walnuts here with the, with the various walnut trees. And then these are, I believe they're hickory. And if these are not those, please don't write me. 
because I'm not a, a horticulturist. Not and, a nut and person. I, I'm not a nut person. <laughs> so I did the best I could. And these are, I think, little acorns that for some reason didn't make it. But we have all of this here. So because of that diversity, we're able to attract a lot of, of bird species here. Don't forget about the worms for the robins. Everybody's got worms. I have a lot of worms. I yeah. have a lot of worms, earthworms. Yeah. I love them. They're good for the garden and good for the, the um, robins. Let's talk about the nectar, nectar. And, and, okay. and we'll go look, look at these are different bird feeders. Yeah. The, um, the hummingbird, hummingbird, those are the two on your right, I guess, <laughs> are hummingbird feeders. Um, th they don't particularly care for those two. Um, <laughs> which is why they're looking. here instead of being up there. They like the old-fashioned kind where you it, it's that very first one. You don't have to have a lot of painting. The red on the item is good enough. You don't have to put red in the nectar. As a matter of fact, don't put, put food red. Coloring. Come no, on. Don't put red in the nectar. Is that bad that, for them? It's bad for them. There is, yeah, there, All they need no is reason. The, maybe the red mm -hmm. on the top yes. and the bottom. Yes. Um, this, one, this one didn't fit the bill at all. Either. That one was is an Oriole feeder, and I put it out there, and the Orioles never fed out of it. My Baltimore Orioles like the hummingbird feeder, one so like I do not put on that. What is that? That is a bee guard or wasp guard that goes on top of the the old timey hummingbird feeder I have up there, and you have to have a beak to get through that sucker, though, yes. right? Yes. So um, I took them off. And I just read that bees and wasps are attracted to yellow. So you're kind of bringing in a problem that you don't really want anyway. Now, the other way that you keep down the bees and the wasps on your nectar feeders is to make it to a four to one ratio, not a three to one, because a three to one is going to be a lot more sugary. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. And, <laughs> and it's going to attract, as you know, I'm a bee person, you're a bee yeah. person. It's going to attract those bees. Now, what is so, this? That is a sock, a Niger sock. A Niger sock. Put and, the Niger seed in here. Yes. We'll see those up there, right? Yes. And who likes that the best? The finches. The finches. Yeah, the gold finches. And this one is a cage for... for the suet. Yeah. And you can also, if you want to, put nesting material in there in the spring. Oh, such a, as feathers, uh, yarn. You have um, a pillow fight, you can put all mm -hmm. that crap in. Yep, you can. Uh, yeah. You can. And these are um, just some nesting things. These are the pretty ones, um, which I would call the non-functioning oh, ones. Yeah, those real. Um, these are real. Uh, these were gifts. Um, this one, there is a nest in there, but as you can see, it, it does have drainage. It also has a hole for Not water to go in. Not a very big hole, though. But, but you can't get to it to clean it very well. This one is better because this does come off, and you can clean it from the top. You can clean it out, but Take this one doesn't have, yeah, but you have to pull out the nest first, but this one has no drainage, and plus these are a little bit warm. Now this one comes from Poland, which I dearly love because I'm Polish, but this has a little thing for the bird to sit on, has a hole, has a drain hole in the bottom, and you can take the top totally off and clean it. So it's a little bit better, but it's still porcelain. Um, this is hand painted, by the way, which is why it stays in the house, not It'll outside. It'll be in the family, yeah. <laughs> It'll be in the family. Hey, let's, um, the, okay, oh, I, oh, I forgot about Oh, just two more, those. very quickly. Of course, this is the bluebird house, and this is a chickadee house. Um, they chickadee, both, I never, I've, yeah. I've seen this bluebird house before, but never yeah. saw a chickadee. Yep, yeah, chickadee. They like smaller ones, and again, the book will tell you if you're trying to attract a specific one. These open up from the side, so you can clean them out all the time. And let me tell you something, birds, don't really care if this is upscale um, houses. How pretty they, it is. They kind of like these. Yeah. They, they like the wood. The cedar Natural. is the best. Yeah. Let's run over to your vegetable garden. Okay. And see some of the stuff that you've planted specifically for the birds. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take my list with me. And wh what did you call a bird? bird ornithologist. Ornithologist? Ornithologist. Ornithologist. I am no ornithologist. <laughs> Well, I will be after today, right? Yeah. No? Yeah. Eileen, I see you got this fence up, and what is what? Why? What reason <laughs> would you have to put a fence up? Well, the only reason I put it up is I have strawberries here, and I don't mind sharing strawberries. 
with my with my oh, birds. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Kind of well, up here. the reason I did that was is that I have a bunch of Canada geese that come through, and I mean we must have fifty to a hundred at any given and they time. They love the strawberries. Well, they don't eat the strawberries. No. What they did is they ate all the leaves off the plants. That's and, not the, good. and then they were walking through it. So yeah, we put this up. Plus, it made a room. You know, P. Allen Smith says you have to have a room in your. So, so that's one of the reasons. So the fence is for to keep out pests. Yes, pests. Speaking of pests. Yes. Birds have pests and, and they dangers. Do. Uh, what, they do. What, what, what are some of those? Can you think of? I've got a couple <laughs> on my mind, but go ahead. Well, squirrels and raccoons love to raid your feeders. Okay. They can tear them up overnight. They I, can. One, I always used to have one. He he clean all up. He'd mess them all up. I'd break them. He, you'd have to reconstruct them. At one night, I looked at. Of course, I love raccoons. I had four raccoons out there eating, but instead of relocating the la raccoons, I relocated and, uh, 20, 30 yeah, of them. Yeah. yeah. So what I do is I put out a lot of food on the ground, and when they get satiated, they leave the bird feeders alone. Now, not everybody's going to want to do that. But, you know, there's not really much you can do about that. The other pests probably are bees and wasps. When we talked about that with the nectar feeders, how not to use a very sugary uh, nectar. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention to the, your listeners is don't use red dye because red dye can actually cause That's tumors. A danger, yeah. It's a, it can actually cause tumors in the hummingbirds. Um, another pest would be owls and hawks. You may not have them too much in the city. I have them out here. So oh. I had one in, in, in town, yeah. In town. And they, they come flying by and they say, oh my gosh, look, it's, it's a buffet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. it is. They don't stay very long, which is oh, a good okay. thing. Um, cats, cats are probably the number one predator. Other than humans. Other than humans uh, that kill a lot, a lot of birds, hundreds of thousands Every a year. year. And if I, I know people love their cats, we take care of them, we make them really, um, hunters that no one, nothing can take them down because their predators aren't around. So if you have to leave them outside, mine are in the barn, they stay in the barn, I bring them out on a leash when I can, they actually walk on a leash for me. But what you want to do is put a elasticized collar with a bell on the cats. Okay. Uh, the other thing is bell window. The cat. Bell, of the cat. bell the cat. Bell the cat. Yeah. The windows. Windows uh, can kill a bird. I just, just saw like one them. this morning. I know. I have a wall of windows, and they they love to fly in. You can put decals. I put up shades. Uh, put screens on the outside. That'll work. If they if, run into the window, what do, what should you do to the bird? Leave the bird alone. If there are no predators around, like a cat outside. If a cat's outside, get a, a box. Put some soft material on it. Put the bird in there. Um, cut holes in the top, put it down, just put it in a cool, dry place, let it recover. What I do is they hit my window, a lot of times I think they're dead, um, and they recover and fly off. Up now to the other maybe thing, 24 hours, they can be yeah, there. They can, it could take them 24 don't hours. Don't be in a hurry to throw them no, away. No. Um, and also don't bury them, even if they are dead. I, I did that a long, long time. And then I realized that I was taking a part of the food chain out. Um, my squirrels eat. Birds. No. My, I, I have pictures of my <laughs> I squirrels you were barbecue eating, them. You know, eating no. goldfinches. So th they disappear. So you're providing food for other animals in, in your habitat. Um, well, let's talk about your garden here for a second. Now, th 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 this uh, these lantana, aren't vegetables. Yes. Echinacea, daisies. Are these good for birds? Uh, the lantana I do mainly for the bees. But the petunias and the other flowers, the um, black-eyed Susans and the um, echinacea, those are great for finches and other uh, birds. Um, I intersperse the regular plantings with my vegetable plantings um, that the birds will like to eat. They, um, I've got tomatoes over there, and the um, birds like to eat the tomatoes. So yeah, I've seen that. In my, you, know, you want to, <laughs> if you only plant one plant, yeah, they'll, they'll, yeah, they'll, they'll hurt you. If you, if you plant enough plants, they, 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 don't, they don't do that many. Yeah. yeah but yeah. again, it, it, there's an old saying, plant, when you're planting outside, plant one for the mold, one for the crow, and one for you. So if you don't mind <laughs> the sharing. Crow, the, I love crows. I know, I didn't come up with the saying, but as long as you do that, you're, you're, you're okay, and you don't mind sharing. Okay, um, now, the, when I'm, one of the number one plants you've got here, the sunflowers, yeah. let's go on over there. Get
This is really a messy looking <laughs> area here. Yes, it <laughs> is. I'm not proud of you. <laughs> yes, I am. No. Look at all the, the, when you have big sunflowers, they're going to fall down unless mm -hmm. you, you do something with them. But what's, what are all these little deals right here? <laughs> hey, those are the flower part, but these are all the seeds. And what will happen is, and you can see it over here, is that the, which, okay. <laughs> there are a bunch of seeds here. They all fall over and the birds can eat them. And that's what they've been doing. They've been going through eating all the, the black oil sunflower seeds. And this favorite one, food. yes, and that one's the gray striped one. So the blue jays and the larger beaked birds can get that. One of the neat things that I think your readers want to know, if they have a place in their yard to have a messy garden, see the way they're coming over? Finches love that. Finches will get there upside down. That'll and clear up underneath there and mm -hmm, get them. And just yeah. hang. Really and and other birds can't do that. Yeah. So it's really nice. So if you have it in your yard, you 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 got going to have a mess, but that's when it's really a, a feast for the birds. Yeah, when something's gone to seed, that's not good for a gardener. No. But when it's gone to seed, that's good for good, the birds. Good for the birds. Good for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go up to the feeders. We've been talking about the feeders. Let's go up there and look at the feeders right now. Okay. Watch out. Put your step there. You're not an athlete like I am. God. No? And now let's, let's talk about my favorite, the hummingbirds. The hummingbirds, the yeah, smallest so little, bird little, there little is. Tiny. And yep. how many hummingbirds, different varieties do you have come here each just year? Just one. One? Yeah, it's just one because we're, we're east of the Mississippi. But Six, if you, 16 on the other side? Well, there are several on the other side, um, on the west of the Mississippi. If you look at the hummingbird feeders where I've put them, is really away from the other feeders that we have for the larger birds because there's less competition. They don't feel like they're under pressure from predation as well. And if you look over, I planted it in such a place that I also have a crepe myrtle where they can run for cover as well as eating the, that food source as well. And there's jasmine over there as well. So they have different places that they can run for protection. There's a river birch tree that they go into. And when they find among themselves, they just go around and run around. They go up to those various trees for protection. And which one of the hummingbirds is usually the bad guy? The male. The male? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, okay let's, let's, let's talk about the other birds besides the hummingbirds, you don't have anything but hummingbirds that visit those Well, feeders. The, the oriole, the finches go up there as well. The they finches like, like it? Yeah, goldfinches love I'll be, nectar. I've never seen a finch do mm -hmm. that. Is that right? Yeah, yeah they do. Okay. But they also like the, the niger, which is what the sock is that I showed earlier. And then these are the black oil sunflower. And I use these because, believe it or not, it's harder for the squirrel to get into those. I was going to say, all of your feeders Although, here are metal. They're metal. The, 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 and, and when you're going, getting ready to buy a feeder, Take in consideration the squirrels and the raccoons and all those guys yeah. and try to find something that's going to be harder for them. Yes. And I, I learned that lesson the hard way. Yes. Just some wooden plastic things sometimes. They can pull that plastic sheet they off do. And, they and, do. And, feed, and feed on everything. Just overnight wreck everything you got. Yes. Now um, the one thing about the metal is that when we have our ice storms around here ah. that you can barely get this off. So it Again, the diversity of the food, but diversity of when you're feeding, you want to feed them all four seasons. So in the wintertime, if you can't get into your feeders because of the ice, like I have had problems with, I throw it on the ground. I throw extra seed. I also throw extra bread out for them. So some birds like to eat on the ground. Like yes. for instance, what do you got here? I've got the corn and for the geese and now the mealworms for the bluebirds. They like but to eat on the ground. Morning doves are bottom feeders, as we call them, ground feeders as well. They'd rather feed down mm -hmm. there. And, and a lot of your sparrows will also feed on the ground. Then you have your mid-level feeders like these. Uh -huh. Finches a lot of times will also like to feed upside down, which we said on the- I've seen that, yeah, yeah that's kind of yeah. neat. A lot of their feeders are like that. But of all the ones I've tried, the socks are the easiest and the best. They get holes, you sew them up or throw them out. I've seen five or six or seven or eight on one sock. Mm -hmm. And guess what the raccoons can do to the socks? They'll tear the bottom off they of them can. right now. They can. But the raccoons can tear apart all of those metal feeders too. Yeah. They swack them down the hill and I have to go get them. So keep... that's why I put food <laughs> on the bottom for the raccoons. But if you, again, look up in the trees and you've got all this other coverage and other food for the higher level eaters. Well, I noticed that these are called shepherd crooks, shepherd some, crooks. something like that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people do those. There's short ones and there's tall. There's a taller one over there and a shorter one. But 
I see you have a lot of these. Do you like these better than put them in, putting the feeders in the trees themselves? Don't, yeah, you don't want to put feeders on the trees, it, especially if you have cats around or other predators ah. of birds, because they can stay in the trees and then jump on them. This way, it's far enough away from any tree that an animal can't jump from the tree to get the birds. So but it you, protects but the birds. Can, they can go to the trees to, to for, for protection. back and forth, yes. yes. But they they're can. a lot quicker going back and forth than a cat is going back and forth. <laughs> And they can sit there and wait their turn. Yeah. I've even seen them up yeah. on these. Only so many yeah. birds can get up on here. Yeah. And, and there's no birds here right now because we're here. Yes. But yeah. as soon as we leave, They'll it's going to be, gonna be packed, mm -hmm. right? It'll be full. And the other thing you want to do, too, is when you put your supplemental feed out here, you may want to add in some natural feed. Yeah. Like I've got flower beds back here. The I saw pastas. The the the, um, the flowers on the hostas, the hummingbirds love that. Anything funnel shaped mm -hmm. like that. Anything, or yes. Trumpet Cardinals shaped. Cardinals and, and the humming, hummingbirds, yes. And it's not even red. They like them even no, they, they like come. red the best, but. Mm -hmm. they, they feed on there all day. And as you can see, the windows up there is I watch my birds all the time. Yeah. No matter where I walk in the house, I can yeah. see birds. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I want to mention before, the ruby, it's a ruby throated yes. hummingbird, is the one that we yes. have here. Sorry. And all the yes. rest of them are on the other side of the Western. Mississippi. But you will get some during, during migration sometimes. You can, yes. I've, I've, I've seen them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're lucky I've not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you for, for letting us come into your garden again today. Uh -huh. And I want to thank our viewers out there for, for tuning in again today. This, this is Bud Kwok, and I'll see you next time on Master Garden.